Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I asked you all on Instagram what vlog you were most interested in seeing from me next and the choices were reading my February TBR, which I haven't really done, I've only read one book, uh, but the other choice was random number generator chooses my TBR and that was the most popular answer. I also asked in the community tab on YouTube and that one reading my February TBR was the winner but I had some friends on Instagram well I had one friend on Instagram in particular <laughs> call out my contrary tendencies so I feel like I was basically bullied into doing this video so um thanks Madeline. So that one won and I didn't have anything to read last night so I did it a little bit earlier but I uh, recorded it for proof of my trustworthiness, I guess. Hi friends, editing em Emily to let you know that uh, somehow I forgot to press record when I was doing the random number generator, so I don't actually have that footage, but I do have footage of me going to the bookshelf and picking the book, so I don't know. I don't know what happened. I was trying to be so thorough and it just... <laughs> didn't work. And the winner was Strange World Travel Agency by L.D. Lipinski, which is a middle grade book that I have had on my shelf since 2020, maybe 2021. It's, it's been, it's been here for a while. And I started it last night and I've made a good chunk of progress so far. I'm about 30% of the way through. And this is takes place in a village in England. Uh, Felicity, otherwise known as Flick, and her family has has just moved to this village and while she's wandering around the main village hub one day she stumbles upon this business called Strange World Travel Agency and the person inside, Jonathan, uh, the business has belonged to his family for generations and he is now in charge and their travel agency uses these suitcases to travel to other lands and they quickly discover upon meeting because Jonathan is very irascible I think is the word and uh very dismissive of Flick and uh but they quickly realize she can see magic which means she is in the unique position to be in the strange worlds society and be tasked with protecting these worlds and acting as a travel guide to these worlds. So that's about where I am so far. The synopsis says that they are going to discover that there is a world where buildings and streets are disappearing and Flick and Jonathan are going to have to discover how to save this world from dissolving into nothing. So I really like it so far. It's a fun read. It's been really quick read. Like I didn't invest that much time in it yet and I'm already about 130 pages in. So I'm excited to keep going with it. This is a good start. I will admit I'm really nervous to do this vlog mostly because I have a day in a fallen night on my physical TBR and I'm real nervous that that number is going to come up. So um, fingers crossed for me that that is not how this video goes because <laughs> that would definitely like everything would grind to a screeching halt if that book gets chosen for me. So but middle grade is a great way to start and I am looking forward to reading more of this. shocking turn of events. 
I finished this in like 24 hours. It was so good. I'm giving it four and a half stars. This is a really great adventure story, a great portal fantasy. I loved the creativity of all the different worlds that Flick and Jonathan went into. I loved this take on a child who thinks they're very ordinary, finding out that they're in fact very special. I thought the, the relationship with Flick and Jonathan was really sweet. Jonathan is a little bit older, he's 18, and so it's a very much be starts off as kind of antagonistic because he is very prickly, but morphs into this really lovely friendship between the two of them. And that's actually like a big part of the story. So hopefully that's not a spoiler. Anyways, um, this was really fun. Now that I've seen a whole lot of people mention this, I had coffee with my bestie this morning who's also a bookseller and she was saying that this is a part of a series so I think there's like three or four books out. I uh, this is this is such a fun such a fun adventure. I would definitely recommend for adults who like to read middle grade and then for kids who like fantasy and adventure and like I said that trope of a child discovering that they have magical powers. I think this would also be a good book for any like oldest child readers because Flick is an oldest child and is really struggling with how her family's dynamic has changed since her baby brother was born and how because of how much her parents have to work to support them because of how expensive life is that Flick has really been forced to grow up and be responsible for herself a lot sooner than her peers. Uh, and I think that's really relatable for a lot of kids now. So yeah, I liked it a lot, clearly. <laughs> and I loved the audiobook, especially like once they started going into other worlds, I liked how the narrator like changed her accent for the different worlds. This challenge is off to a great start. No complaints. Um, we're gonna roll for another book, though I won't be able to start it now because my oldest two, um, they've been in rehearsal for a play all month and perform it, well, all of January, and then their first performance is tonight. But I can at least see what book is up next. So there we are at 77. I'm going to generate a few times just to get it going, but I'm not gonna look. Just gonna make sure. So we're gonna press it a couple times. Okay, and now we're gonna do it. Come on, focus. Okay, and now we're gonna do it. This is the for real one. Okay, 75. Oh, it's kinda high up, okay. Watch, it's gonna be um, <laughs> lighter, so then I'll have to start all over again. All right, so number 75 is Her Night with the Duke. Man, uh, the universe really took me literally when I was saying that I was going to get back into romance this year. So Her Night with the Duke is historical romance. And I think the main character is Indian, or like half, like, it, British Indian? Indian British? Do people in other countries, because you know the U.S. is, is like, oh, you have to, you know, every, everything is like, if you're, if you're not white, then everything is qualified with like whatever the race is supposed to be, like Asian American, African American, da 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 da. But other countries, are you just like, your nationality? Like in Britain, and maybe nobody watching knows this, but in Britain, are you just British? Like, do other countries do that the same way? Like, is it, is it African Britain? No, British? No, what? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I can Google that. I don't need an answer. Okay, I'm gonna go get the book now. <laughs> Hopefully this angle isn't 
too funky. <laughs> I'm in my car, obviously. And I have to go to work, as per usual, feels like. Um, but I'm about 150 pages, 140 pages into Her Night with the Duke. And I already knew what the setup of this book was going into it. So Leela, our main character, she's a uh, half Arab. And she's been traveling in India, um, meeting her mother's family, uh, who she's, she'd never known as a child. And she's on her way back to her late husband's estate because her stepdaughter is about to be betrothed. And she stops at this inn and there are some very disgusting men at this inn who say really horrible, uh, bigoted things to her. And, uh, Elliot, who is a duke, kind of swoops in and comes to her rescue and they end up having like a one night stand in this inn because she's a widow and he, uh, well, not because she's a widow, they just have one night stand. And Elliot is on the way to go uh, meet or to go to a house party at his soon to be intended brother's house. So they have this one night stand and then both arrive at the estate only to discover that Elliot is the man that Leela's stepdaughter is being courted by and <laughs> that Leela is Elliot's intended stepmother. So, you know, it's complicated. It's It hurts a little bit because historical romance used to be like my one true love. I loved it so much much. I was ride or die for it. I, you know, shout it from the rooftops, defend it all day long. And I find now with historical romance, it's a little bit harder for me to get into. And I don't know why. I can't figure it out. I do notice that um, the steamy scenes are a lot, they actively make me cringe now. Um, not because of like the descriptions, but just the way, like the way the characters talk to each other in those scenes, it, it feels cringe in a way it didn't used to feel cringe. So as long as I skip those scenes, I'm fine. <laughs> or, you know, skim them. I skim them to make sure nobody reveals anything like important, uh, during those scenes. But, um, I'm definitely glossing over them in a way I didn't used to and it makes me kind of sad but now that I'm into it I'm enjoying it I really like Leela as a main character um she's really fun she's kind she's smart she's a writer and she has published a travel log about India um anonymously of course because she's a woman and is currently working on the second volume and so it's kind of it's fun to watch her listen to other people talk about her book and not be able to say that she wrote her book. And because it's a historical romance, like, I kind of, I kind of know where it's going. And, you know, because the concern would be, well, how does her, how does Elliot get out of being betrothed to Leela's stepdaughter without it being a scandal? And I, I feel like stepdaughter is going to fall in love with somebody else. I feel like that's where we're setting up. That's how I feel like that's where we're gonna get out. How we're gonna get out of this, um, which is a, that might be, I could be wrong. Maybe it's not a spoiler, but that feels like where we're going at. You know, thirty percent into the book, and for romance, that makes sense. Like for knowing like historical romance, like obviously Leela is not gonna blow up her relationship with her stepdaughter. So yeah, I uh, so far it's a solid like three three and a half star read and I'm making really quick progress on it which is nice though I didn't read as long as I planned to this morning my husband bought Animal Crossing and I'm slowly getting sucked in <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't take over too much but it is a really cute game all right and with that I have to go to work so I will update you all later Hello friends, long time no update. This weekend has just been a lot. It's been a lot and I am tired. But uh, Sunday night, I'm making pizza. By making pizza, I mean I picked up made pizza and now it's in the oven. <laughs> so, uh, but I did finish Her Night with the Duke. 
by Diana Quincy. And let's start with what I liked. I really liked Leela, the main character. I liked her backstory. I liked what she was currently working through, being the author of this travelogue, and also a woman of color in very patriarchal colonist London. And she's dealing with a lot. I liked the storyline that was about her career and about what she wanted to do with it. I liked the storyline, like her relationship between her and her stepdaughter. I thought that was great. You know what I didn't like? The frickin' romance. I hated the actual romance, which <laughs> in a romance novel is a problem. Here's the thing though, I didn't like Hunt. I didn't like Hunt and I didn't feel like, or Elliot or whatever, every, I hate how Dukes have like 30 names. Uh, I didn't like that. So Diana Quincy starts off the book by saying that Hunt is really fastidious and is not impulsive and likes everything ordered. But we never see that um, because he meets Leela right away and then is thrown into impulsivity. So she kept saying how rule oriented he is, but you never really see that. He also is in love. Oh, hold please. Okay. One pizza's out, next pizza's in. Getting back to the book. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, Hunt. Okay, so they sleep together right away. Like first chapter in the book. And then Hunt falls in love with her really fast. And every time he talks to another character about being in love with Leela and like what he likes about her, it is all physical. And ev almost every single scene with these two, they are either fighting a little bit or they're having sex. That's it. They never just talk everything is couched in their physical relationship. And maybe, maybe it's just my aceness. But every time he was like, I love her. I'm like, you don't even know her. You have not had a single conversation with her that hasn't involved like getting her naked or fighting with her. Like, how can you love her? So I never, I never bought it. I never bought it. Um, I think Leela can do better, honestly. He's a Duke, so what? She she could she can do better. I liked it best when she was like, absolutely not. I am not marrying you. I am never getting married again. I loved that. Also, uh, this book did me dirty because this is gonna be a spoiler. So like, skip ahead like 20 seconds if you don't wanna hear this. But she tells him she's barren at the beginning of the book because she was never able to get pregnant with her first husband. And guess what she has in the epilogue? I hate it. I hate it. I, why can't infertility just be infertility? Why does there have to be a magic penis that solves the problem every time we have it in historical romance, especially, but I also know that there are contemporary romances that do this too. And I just want to tell all you authors, knock it off. Either have the balls to address infertility or don't put it in your book. That's what I'm going to say. Cause it's making me mad. Anyways, it's a 2.75. I didn't like it. And it's been on my TBR for a really long time, so I am mad that I didn't like it. But moving on with the vlog. Now we're gonna do the random number generator again. We're gonna generate it a couple times to, okay, you can turn all my settings are in the right spot. I'm gonna turn it down. Is that better? <laughs> so, okay, sorry guys, the lighting is like less than ideal. Okay, we're gonna generate it a couple times to get it going. And then this one is for real. Four. And we're all the way at the high end of the spectrum and now we're all the way at the low end of the spectrum. Okay, let's go see what four is. A Gentleman in Moscow by <gasps> Amor. No. Oh. Random number generator did me dirty. All right, book four is A Gentleman in Moscow. <laughs> by eight more tools. Okay, I'm, I have this because my friends Madeline and Donna 
read it several years ago and loved it. And so I got it because they loved it so much because it was like 50 cents at the library sale. But I don't know. Literary fiction and I, and I can be so, so funky sometimes. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay. Let's go get it. Maybe it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. That's so rude. Oh, it's all the way up there. Just pretend you didn't see all that dust flying off the shelves. It's fine. Hello friends, it is Monday. Okay, I cannot even begin to explain how upset I was yesterday about not liking the ending to Her Night with the Duke. It put me in a funk for the rest of the evening. I was so cranky. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's going to come across in the footage, but I was so mad. Um, which, unfortunately, like, bled into uh, having a gentleman in Moscow be my pick. But I did start it a little bit last night and got about 20 pages in. And I do like the writing. I'm interested. I thought it would be... For some reason I thought the writing would be a little bit more dense and it's not. It's easily readable so far. I'm going to try to adjust my attitude <laughs> going forward. Uh, I am exhausted today. I did go and I taught this morning and I haven't been to the gym and I'm the kind of exhausted where I'm debating just giving myself like a rest day um, because I'm just so, I'm just so tired so tired but um I do have a package to open and there is books in it because one of my friends and I who we live in different states but we do a galentine's exchange every year for four years five years we've been doing it for a long time and her package <laughs> arrived a day early oh my gosh she taped it so thoroughly. Okay, we'll see if I can even get into it. Um, and Galentine's is tomorrow, but you know what? I need the um, serotonin hit today, so I'm going to open mine <laughs> today. And we always do, it's always book related. Like, we send each other our wish lists um, for what books we want, and then we also will, like, include, like, some candy or, like, a few goodies. Uh, this will go up well after Galentine's, so I sent her, I ended up getting her two books because... I like to and I sent her uh, Butcher and Blackbird and one of the Elsie Silver books but I can't remember which one now <laughs> plus like her favorite candy and yeah but this is her box to me and I sent her my bookshop wish list so I have no idea what she picked because it has a lot of stuff in it um, and I was also, that's always linked below if you ever want to check it out. Which I mean. So, she sent me my favorite candy, which I don't think I've talked about it on here, but my favorite candy is the um, trashy candy. I don't want the stuff that has actual ingredients in it. I want the stuff that is like 100% artificial. So, like white chocolate, artificially flavored chocolate is my favorite, and um, Sour Patch Kids is my favorite. I just, I want the super junky stuff. Send me a bookmark. So cute. But look at this wrapping paper. I'm obsessed. This is so pretty. I wonder if I can open it without damaging any of it. Yeah, sure. Um, just do it as slow as humanly possible. That's fine. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, I'm excited. All right, so she sent me A Market of Dreams by Trip Gailey. And this is, I believe, um, a Killian fantasy romance. Like, think A Marvelous Light vibes. And there's like a goblin market type situation. Anyways, yes, this came out, I think, late last year. I've been 
very curious about it. I love this cover. I know that wasn't very enthusiastic. I, I don't, I don't even know how to describe how, how tired I am today. <gasps> yes. I was hoping she'd pick this one. Okay. Yay. Um, the other one is my current obsession. <laughs> Butcher and Blackbird. Yay. Oh, uh, okay. This is what I'm reading. Once I'm done with Gentlemen in Moscow, this is what I'm reading. I'm so excited. All right. I don't think Paige watches my YouTube, but Paige, if you do, if you do, thank you. I love you. And I'm so glad we're still kicking, still kicking it, still, still hanging on after all these years. All right. I, okay. What am I going to do? I, I think I am going to use an audiobook credit to get the audiobook for a gentleman in Moscow. I have just been so reliant on audiobooks lately. I think that's just what I have to do. So that is what I'm going to do. All right. And I'll update when I, ha oh, did we say what this is about? This is, so this takes place in Moscow and the main character, I forgot his name, but he's a count and he is tried in the Russia court system for writing a poem that the government officials feel were a call to action. And so his punishment or sentence is to be under house arrest in the hotel that he's lived in for like the last however many years. And if he ever sets foot outside of the hotel, the police will shoot him on sight. Um, and so the beginning of the book opens with the transcript of the trial and the sentencing. And then the, you get the first chapter, you get um, him being marched back to the hotel with the police and they the process of moving him out of like the penthouse that he's been living in into like a garret room in the attic, basically. And meeting a few of the hotel employees and just getting a sense of like his childhood and his personality and um so i like i said the writing is good i feel like it's pretty accessible it's not too flowery which i appreciate actually i wouldn't even say it's really flowery at all i mean only in that the uh account writes poetry and so he's very uh what's the word i want observes what's that i don't know he he takes note of his surroundings in a really interesting way so he's pretty aware of his surroundings and what's going on and notices the small things and so yeah i'm just um we'll we'll see where it goes from there all right i have an update kind of i've gotten 30 pages in to a gentleman in moscow and while I am liking it, not hating it, I'm pretty neutral. There's not like, I'm not that interested. I'm not like hooked. I'm not like really vibing, but I'm not hating it. So I'm, I'm very neutral about it. This is not a book I want to rush through. I think that would be a big, big mistake. I also think finishing Her Night with the Duke put me into a reading slump because I am struggling to read anything. I've been trying to read this one and it's, I'm, I'm very distracted every time I pick it up. It's, it's hard for me to really focus my attention on it. And I was wondering if it was the book. So I started something else. I started a horror and I'm having the same experience with the horror book I started where I just, my attention span is not in it. So I think I'm in a reading slump. And because I'm in the reading slump, I'm actually not going to, I'm not going to DNF it. And even if I did, it would be a soft DNF, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to set, put it down and I'm going to try do like a reading reset. But because I'm doing, going to do a reading reset, that means I'm going to end the vlog here which feels disappointing. I hate ending vlogs on 
a DNF or even if it's a soft DNF or a setting aside, but I just know that if I continued to push myself to pick this up, then then we I'd really be in trouble. So I'm going to end the vlog here. This was a fun kind of challenge to do. I haven't done this kind of challenge before. I don't think I will do it again. Or if I do, it won't be, it won't be for a long time. <laughs> so I don't think this particular type of challenge really works for me, but it was good to try it out and see how it went. And you know, now know that this is not like my ideal reading challenge. Can we go back to Friday when I was reading Strange Worlds and just loving my bookish life? That was, that was the best. That was so fun. <sighs> Anyways, uh, so um, if you made it to the end of this video, <laughs> thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me. And I'm sorry this is kind of a lackluster ending to a reading vlog, but I'm we're gonna get it. To, I'm gonna get it together. I hope you all have oh are having a wonderful day and are reading something absolutely fantastic that you love. And I will talk to you all in the next one. Bye. Bye.